Hat, sunglasses, Pepsi, notes, sources, thick skin, check. You already know. Let's go. Welcome to Golden Blue today, everybody. This is the College Football Channel. So if you like college football, hit the like and subscribe button. It's that simple. Also, send gear to represent your team and be a part of my background forever. All you have to do is send it to P.O. Box 360, Liberty, South Carolina, 29657. And don't forget to check out our Patreon page. We have a lot of great perks over there. The perk that people seem to enjoy the most, of course, is the score prediction contest where we award $20 every single week to whoever gets closest to the actual score of the game that I pick. We also did a championship week. I will award $25 to that winner and right now is the best time to join patreon because we are going to do the bowl prediction contest first place prize will win fifty dollars second place prize is an autographed golden blue dude flat bill hat and the third place prize is a shout out and the more patrons we get the higher we can bump up the prize so if we get up to three hundred dollars with the patreon pledges we will bump up the prize to seventy five dollars if we get up to four hundred dollars with the patreon pledges we'll bump the prize up to a hundred dollars and so on and so forth so there's even an incentive for current patreon members to encourage encourage other people to join Patreon. That way the price goes even higher. I'll leave the link to the Patreon page in the description of this video. Yesterday was a, uh, a very, very sad day for college football. Mike Leach, at the age of 61, suffered a major massive heart attack. Complications arose, possible seizures and brain damage, and he was sent to hospice where they made him as comfortable as possible, but unfortunately yesterday Mike Leach did pass away. Great coach, great human being. I would have loved to meet this guy in person. You couldn't help but root for the guy. He, he was just such a likable guy. He's had a lot of success in college football, but he never coached at a blue blood program like at Ohio State, and Michigan, at Texas, and Oklahoma, at USC, and Alabama, Georgia. You get the point. But at the places that he did coach, number one, he had a personal impact, and number two, he did have success. He brought these teams up to prominence. He spent 10 years at Texas Tech. He was 84 and 43. That's a winning percentage of 66.1%, and Texas Tech was a legitimate Big 12 contender every single year under Mike Leach. And there were some great games that we saw under Mike Leach with Texas Tech. His next stop was Washington State. Eight years there. 55 and 47 was his overall record. That's a winning percentage of 53.9%. And Washington State was struggling very, very much when Mike Leach got there. He brought them up and Washington State has been good ever since. And then finally he moved on to Mississippi State where he coached three years, 19 and 17 overall. That's a winning percentage of 52.8%. Mississippi State fans love Mike Leach. Everywhere he's been, people absolutely loved him as a person, as a head coach, as a human being. Overall, in his 21 years of coaching, he was 158 and 107. That's a winning percentage of 59.6%. That's pretty good, especially when you consider he coached at Texas Tech, Washington State, and Mississippi State. The dude was a winner. He was an offensive genius, and the current coaches that coach either in college football or the NFL under his coaching tree is much bigger than what I realized. Dave Aranda at Baylor, who was an assistant of Mike Leach for 2000-2002. Neil Brown at West Virginia, who played for Leach in 1998. Sonny Cumbie, who coaches for Louisiana Tech, played for Leach from 2000-2003. Sonny Dykes, the TCU coach, co-offensive coordinator for Mike Leach from 2000-2006. Josh Heupel, Tennessee head coach, played for Leach in 1999. Daniel Holgerson, the Houston head coach, assistant to Mike Leach from 1993 to 1995. Then offensive coordinator for Mike Leach from 2000-2007. Cliff Kingsbury, the Arizona Cardinals head coach, played for Mike Leach from 2000-2002. Seth Sattrell, North Texas coach, played for Leach in 1999. The running back coach for Mike Leach from 2005 to 2008. Lincoln Riley, the USC head coach, played for Mike Leach in 2002 and was an assistant to Mike Leach from 2003 to 2009. Ken Wilson, the Nevada head coach, linebacker coach for Mike Leach from 2013 to 2019. And there's many, many offensive coordinators and position coaches that are under the Mike Leach coaching tree. So just a lot of names to talk about. But those are the head coaches, current active head coaches that are under the Mike Leach coaching tree. He will be missed. And as much as you hate to talk about it during a time of mourning, you do have to talk about the future. You do have to look at what coaches Mississippi State could go after in the future to replace the late, great Mike Leach. Rest in peace, Mike Leach. You're in a better place. You are a blessing to everybody, even to us that didn't know you. So here are the coaches that I think Mississippi State should take a look at to replace Mike Leach for 2023. First name I looked at was Willie Fritz at Tulane. 
He's been at Tulane for seven years. His overall record is actually not a winning record, 42-45. and 45. But in 2022, Tulane looked really, really good. They went 11-2. They won the AAC, and they will play number 10 USC in the Cotton Bowl. He's worth a look, but you would be taking a chance because he's only really had one really good year at Tulane. But Willie Fritz could be a potential candidate for Mississippi State. The next name you have to look at is Gus Malzahn at UCF. In his two years at UCF, 18-8. and eight. That's really, really good. That's 9-4 and four and 9-4 and four in his two years. Eight years at Auburn, 68 and 35 overall. UCF will play Duke in the military ball. Gus Malzahn has experience at Auburn in the SEC West, so he knows the SEC West very, very well. This would be a home run hire for Mississippi State. I think Mississippi State should most definitely look at Gus Malzahn. He should be at the top of their list. The next coach that they maybe should look at, I don't know if he's attainable, Florida State's Mike Norville. In his three years at Florida State, he's 17 and 16 overall, including this year, 9 and 3 in 2022. Florida State will play Oklahoma in the Cheez-It Bowl. Mike Norvell is building something special there at Florida State. Could Mississippi State entice Mike Norvell from Florida State over to Mississippi State? SEC money talks, but it just depends on how loyal Mike Norvell is to Florida State. The next name Mississippi State needs to look at. Now, this is taking a chance, though. The head coach at Duke, Mike Elko. He's only coached one year, but it was a pretty good year at Duke. That's 8-4. and four. He will play UCF in the Military Bowl. I mean, to go 8-4 and four in your first year at Duke, that's saying something, but at the same time, he doesn't have much experience. So yes, that would be rolling the dice. The next name you have to look at is Pat Narduzzi at Pitt. Eight years at Pitt, he's done really, really well. 61 and 41 overall, including 11 and 3 in 2021 ACC champs. And then this year, 8 and 4 in 2022. They will play number 18 UCLA in the Sun Bowl. Could Mississippi State entice Pat Narduzzi away from Pitt? That's a name they need to look into. The next name they need to look at is Maryland's Mike Loxley. In his five years at Maryland, not a winning record, 20 and 28. But he has Maryland winning as of late. I think he's a good head coach, including 7-6 in 2021 and 7-5 this year in 2022. And Maryland will play number 23 NC State in the Dukes Mayo Bowl. Mike Loxley is a tough head coach. He will instill toughness in the players. He's worth a look. Next name Mississippi State needs to look at is the head coach for UTSA, Jeff Trailer. He's been there for three years, 30 and 9. That is a great record, including a 7 5, a 12 and 2, and an 11 and 2 record. They will play number 24, Troy, in the Cure Bowl. Jeff Trailer has had a lot of success at UTSA. If you're going to look at the group of five as far as a head coach goes, Jeff Trailer should be a name you're looking at. Speaking of group of five coaches, the coach for Fresno State, Jeff Tedford, he's been there four years, overall 35 and 18. That's pretty good, including a 10 and 4, a 12 and 2, then a 9 and 4 record this year. And Fresno State will play Washington State in the LA Bowl. If you're going to look at group of five coaches, you have to look at Jeff Tedford. The next name that Mississippi State needs to look at, and I think he would actually be a fitting replacement for Mike Leach is Chip Kelly over there at UCLA. He's been there five years. Not a winning record 27-28, but UCLA is much better under Chip Kelly. 8-4 in 2021, and then they took another step forward in 2022 going 9-3, and and they will play Pitt in the Sun Bowl. Chip Kelly is a name that should be high on a lot of coaching searches. The next name that's worth a look at is a South Carolina head coach, Shane Beamer. He's only been there two years, but he's 15-10 and 10 overall, including 7-6 in 2021, 8-4 in 2022. Shane Beamer Beamer took over a broken South Carolina, and South Carolina is looking much, much better under Shane Beamer. They will play number 21 Notre Dame in the Gator Bowl. South Carolina finished the regular season by beating Tennessee at home, absolutely crushing them, and then going on the road and beating Clemson. That's two top 10 wins to finish the season. So he knows how to have success in the SEC at South Carolina. Imagine what he could do at Mississippi State. But that all depends on how loyal he is to South Carolina. So y'all let me know in the comments section, number one, who's your favorite name out of the list of these coaches for the Mississippi State? head coaching search. And number two, did I leave any names out? If so, what names did I leave out? Who should Mississippi State go after to replace the late, great Mike Leach? That's all I got for you for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on my next show.